Wright family. So this is Carrie Digsby, Urban Times Magazine, and I get the I don't know if I could say is it an honor, a privilege, a blessing, because this <laughs> sister right here Oh, you're laughing now. But no, seriously though, because I mean this sister right here does so much. I mean, just the to get the opportunity to talk to a like spirited individual to me means a lot. So I want to introduce to our readers, our followers, our YouTube subscribers, Miss Chanel Angeli. What's going on, sis? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. I really appreciate it. It um it took a it took a lot of years to to get to that place where people um really saw that inner light cuz it wasn't always that way. So when I hear it now, it's just such a breath of fresh air because I know that I put in the work, you know, um as an individual to get to that place. Oh yeah, we definitely all go through a journey, and and it's and it kind of leads to a question that I always like to ask people, um, and I definitely want to ask you because I think our our followers and our subscribers and such will definitely get this. Um, so the question is, who is Chanel Angeli? Well, I am. If this is not too far out for your readers, just a soul like everybody else incarnate as a female in this lifetime and beyond that i am a mother and a writer and a poet and a spoken word um entertainer and um i just i just i just really feel that i'm beginning to walk in my purpose with all of those things and i love to be defined by those labels because uh, I'm passionate about each of them, but I mm-hmm. also I also know that I don't need any of them also. That's deep. That's deep. I don't think they really got that. I, I, I tried to catch it on the first <laughs> go-round, but I don't think they really got that. So could you say it one more time to them? <laughs> so, um, I believe a lot in uh, – that, you know, when you see kids that people have been here before, you've seen it, like children with old souls. They call them indigo children now. Um, and I was mm-hmm. just talking about a, with a friend of mine about this topic because her daughter says, like, the most out there things, and you're like, this kid is, like, way beyond her years. And um, I read somewhere that when the war was going on in Afghanistan, which was not too long ago, or any time there was war, a lot of heartache going on in the world where people were praying a lot um, and God was hearing their prayers. And so God would send down angels to help um, people here heal, humanity heal. And so a lot of that, those children that were, that came about through prayers are being um coming of age now and able to talk and those are really angels on earth that were sent because of times that um, we were going through a lot as a people so when I say like oh I'm just Chanel who incarnated in this lifetime as a female I really mean that I don't think that um, this is my first time here I don't think this is your first time here (laughs) and um (laughs) The other, yeah, the other labels, you know, yeah, I am a mother. I love my children dearly. Um, I'm a single mom. I'm an advocate for single moms. I was raised by a single mom who was raised by a single mom who was raised by a single mom. So, um, and I have a poem about that Um, and and what I feel like uh, people, I grew up Baptist, so what people would call generational curses. And that's just particular to my story, but um, a lot of people have them. Sometimes it's alcoholism. Sometimes it's drug abuse. Sometimes it's mental illness. Um, and um, I, I, I want to break that. I want to stop that. I want to help people heal. I want to, through my writing and my poetry and ex- being vulnerable in my journey, kind of show people um, that it's possible and we don't have to live in that space of suffering and um, sometimes self-inflicted suffering because we're just we're, we just don't know you know or we don't acknowledge it or become aware of it i know that was long-winded but <laughs> no no hey i asked you to repeat it to him again and you even did it better than the first time so thank you <laughs> I, I definitely appreciate that so what a 
what our readers also need to know about you, Chanel, is that you're very passionate about holistic living. And and if you can, just share with them why that is so important to you as well as you spreading that information and that message to others as you come in contact with them. Okay, so sure. So um, when I think about holistic living, I really think about being present in the moment, in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, in all aspects that are possible. And I rem- I just remember a time where it wasn't like that for me and how much kind of went on over, my, over my head, how much I didn't value, how much um, – I saw a prompt the other day in a journal of mine that said, where did you see God today in your life? You know, just walking around like where did you see – Like, where did you see God? And I I think that holistic living is trying to to live so that you see a miracle in everything. You see the beauty in everything. And when you start to see that, you start to take care of yourself differently. You start to live differently. Um, You start to appreciate um, relationships at a deeper level because you kind of understand them for what they are. Either they're uh, lessons to be taught are mirrors of yourself and things that you need to uh, heal and uh, become aware of in yourself. And I think mm-hmm. that holistic living is that, is taking a moment to breathe. It's taking a moment in, in every moment to really sent, get centered and grounded and, and understand that there is no such thing as coincidence. There is no such thing as someone who's here for um, – by accident, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, and there is, and even when you meet people, like there is no, no person that you met by chance. So um, it, it goes into your diet, it goes into your eating habits. Um, it, it's just a it's, a, it's a practice for me. And some things are harder than others because <laughs> I've been, because <laughs> I've been, um, on this vegetarian journey off and on for a long time. <laughs> and, oh. um, yeah. So some okay. things are definitely harder than others. <laughs> I can understand that. Let me tell you, I just, me and my wife and, and some family members, we just came from an event that one of my people were throwing. It was called the Soul Food Vegan Fest. And let me tell that you. That sounds so good. Oh, it was so dope. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Tabitha Brown. I think that name sounds familiar. You need to go and check out Tabitha Brown. Let me tell you, this sister is so okay. amazing, and you would love her and just her and her her journey um, becoming vegan and just it's like you just mentioned not too long ago. We don't meet by accident. It's like it's destined that we're going to connect. And I think that just, you know, meeting and talking with her just this past weekend and now talking to you was just amazing. So um, I just want to share that with you because you're sharing with us. Yes. So I have to share with you. So check out yes. Tabitha Brown on Facebook and stuff. You're going to, you're going to love her. You're going to love her. I think you two need to meet. So with that yes, being said, I, so <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to commend you. Uh, in regards to uh, a recent event you was at, which is at the the Goddess Glow Up event. Yeah, yeah. You dropped some jewels there. Yeah, you, let me tell you, as a guy, I'm a guy, okay, and I was listening, and I was like, you was dropping some serious jewels to those sisters there. (laughs) Thank you. So they were receiving it, and I was like, wow, so simply amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, how does that feel you. to be a part of stuff like that? How does how does it feel to be, <laughs> excuse me be involved in that? Um, it was really moving for me. I feel like when I write a poem, um, it's the most open I can be, and so mm-hmm. I I I, I kind of take a photograph with that poem. I take a photograph of that feeling and what I'm trying to convey. And so every time that I recite that poem through spoken word. I kind of I, I kind of have to go back to that place, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. so that people understand. I can't just sit there and read it, or um, cause, because it's it's not just the words, it's the emotion. And at the Goddess Glow Up, when I went through my set, I cur- I created this set specifically um, about healing, and I put together the poems that I written in order 
of uh, hard times to like the light at the end of the tunnel. And I was so immersed in just my story and how um, much pain that was. And I, and my voice was shaky and I was, it was really hard for me to get through it. And at one point I looked up and I saw mm-hmm. everyone crying, everyone mm-hmm. in the room crying. And I had to realize that this is not, this is not an a individual event. Like every woman, woman goes through these kind of things. We all feel this kind of heartache. We all have been there. We all can relate. And so it was extremely moving. Like the energy in the room was so powerful and we, <laughs> we, we were a wreck, <laughs> but, but in a good way, because it was like a breakthrough. You know, I I want to say, like, I feel like those poems really broke the room. Like, have you heard that term before? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, most definitely. Yeah. Sometimes you got to get broken down to be built up. So you, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really beautiful. It was beautiful. So would you say that your, you know, your writing, your poetry and such brings a more, because you kept you mentioned several times in regards to your growth and how where you used to be and where you are now, has your writings and your poetry and such now bring about a more creative and kind of more open side to Chanel for everyone to see? I absolutely would agree with that because um when I first gained my following on Instagram, I was just posting pictures. I had a swimsuit line, then I had a travel blog. And so I was doing a lot of um, photos, like on the beach and stuff like that. And I was keeping safe, so my pictures would end up going viral. And that's how I built my following. And But I would never talk about my, my home life, my relationship, my family life. And when I, I had an extreme stage fright, so it's like, when I was writing poetry, I was like, well, I would never perform these poems ever, ever. Like, <laughs> like, I start to sweat. I start to feel nauseous. And I got with an amazing mentor who helped me with that. And once I got over that, it's so, it's like everything else comes easily. Now I make videos on my page all the time talking about, um, I all, I'm always going live talking about issues in the community. Um, things that uh, we as a people could work on. I'm always voicing my views on um, politics and other things. And a lot of times I still have those followers from five years ago that just know me um, for posting pretty pictures and selfies and um, hosting events. And so I'll get those rude comments that are like, no, you need to go back to to doing this or that. And and it's like, that just makes me want to go harder. So, yeah, I would say that has opened up Poetry has definitely opened up a lot, or helped me open up a lot. Yep. And, well, that's what's up. So here's another thing that I'll read this, guys. Y'all need to know about Chanel because she's, you know, again, she, she does poetry, and she just mentioned as far as modeling and such. But someone wrote, what is that? What was it called? Melt? Uh, yeah. <laughs> And and that, you know, again, Tangie and I, we were talking about that. And I think that people need to know about that because you, you showed us, you showed an authoritative side of you as well, which is really to help, I guess, couples and individuals. So let's talk about milk. Yeah, so uh, that's, my, that's my baby. That's my first book. And it's a, <laughs> massage, yeah, it's a massage and meditation guide for um, people who want to form deeper bonds um, with their partner or even to find themselves a little bit more, some self-discovery, right? And Mm -hmm. that came about because I was dating. I was like newly out of a long-term relationship and I was dating. And I found that every person that every time I would go on a date, it was so superficial, the conversation. It was so um, surface level we would talk about what we saw on TV. We would talk about like what movies, you know, get, try to get to know each other's upbringing. But I really didn't feel like it was any connections, any, any connections for me. And I get that sometimes that that takes time, but I also felt like there was a need for people to um, 
take a moment, like I said earlier, and be present with that other person and realize, like, that's a whole nother soul, and you guys are connected for a reason. And so the book, when you find that person that you want to go there with, the book does get into um, meditations that you can do as a couple, affirmations that you can say to each other, kind of getting into a, a deeper level of understanding with one another and um, creating that more secure, beautiful bond through vulner, vulner, vulnerability. Sorry, I have braces now, and so sometimes it's like really hard <laughs> to pronounce. I'm still not used to them. Oh, I understand. So I, That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so if I ever can't say a word, it's because my mouth is just not adjusted. But being vulnerable is um, a healthy part of a relationship. And I, when I was dating, I didn't feel like that was happening. I felt like everybody had their walls up and I wasn't getting to know anyone's true self. Um, and no one was getting to know my true self either. So I thought that that was needed. And Mel, it's a beautiful book for that. Okay. Well, hey, family, y'all heard it right here. That's the book. <laughs> You're in a relationship. Get it. It'll help two of yeah. you really connect on a physical, spiritual, mental level. So Yeah, next. and okay. it's on iBooks. It's on Kindle, <laughs> Amazon.com. It's on my website, which I have a whole bunch of other things also, ChanelAngeli.com. But, yeah, it's mm -hmm. pretty much available everywhere. That is what's up. Okay, okay, okay. So we got to go here because people have been ranting and raving about this, so I have to share this with them as well. We got to talk about Melanin Mermaid. Mm -hmm. Getting rave reviews. You know, we're talking about, <laughs> you know, the skin line, the body butter, you know. Um, yeah. You know, you're talking about the jewelry, the amethyst. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. How, I mean, you you are doing this thing. How did you come up with this because I mean this brand has really shot off. I mean people are on YouTube. They're talking about it. They're giving you reviews. Yeah. They're, they're swearing by it. Okay, so share with us. How did you come up with melanin and so, mermaid? Yeah. So when my daughter was um, younger and I was traveling a lot, um, she had eczema, so I was trying to find ways to help her um, with that that didn't involve chemicals because I was beginning my holistic journey also. So I just decided to make it myself, <laughs> and I, mm. I went on YouTube and learned like everybody else, learned everything on YouTube. People, you know, I saw someone build a house from YouTube tutorials the other day. Like, it's crazy. But um, <laughs> so I learned, um, and then my mom works at Emory. She's an RN. And she tried it, and she was just like, you should really sell this. I'm taking this to work because the doctors wash their hands all the time, and their skin gets chapped up and um, and cracked, especially in the winter, so they'll love this. And she did, and they gave rave reviews. And then I was able to get reviews from them. And, you know, one kind of like uh, practitioners will give you their um, the okay, like, and say, no, this is actually a good product. It kind of – it kind of sets it off because I was able to use reviews from real doctors. And, um, yeah, people loved it. The, the issue that I came across with making the products in my kitchen by myself was that the demand was so high and people started to want cases of it. And I was like a one-man show. Um, and so – I decided to stray away from that because I really just wasn't able to keep up with the demand and still keep the quality of it because um, mm -hmm. it would be an all-day thing, like putting the – just like any entrepre entrepreneur knows, and a lot of black women were the highest um, rising in, in um, entrepreneurs. So I was doing the labels myself, getting the jars, putting it in the jars, getting the body, getting the shea butter, the coconut oil, the cocoa butter – um, the, the essential oils, making the, all of the products myself, and it was just a lot for me. Um, so I still wanted to help people, so I decided to kind of switch to another love of mine, which is crystals, and mm -hmm. um, what that does and helps people raise their vibration, and some, and some of them, they have different properties, but they're still very healing and sage to clear your space of negative energy, um, just to just to cleanse your area, and so that's more the the way that I'm going with Melanin Mermaid now, and I'm kind of veering away from 
the actual skin and hair care products just because until, you know, I am able to open up my own shop or factory and mass produce. But right now I can't. I can't. I, I have too much going on. But I'm excited about the metaphysical side of it because I hope to open up my own store soon and sell my own um, crystals and probably oils. So, yeah, that's that's what I have in store for Melon and Mermaid, and that's how it started. No, oh, that's good. That is good. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So, we're just going to take a little hiatus from the skincare and stuff, but we're definitely going to deal with, of course, the crystals and the, right. the balance and, and the oils. I love it. Love it, love it, love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So, and another, I sorry, I had a, no, a black tourmaline amulet, which is a, a black stone. And what people don't realize, one of the properties of it was that it deflects EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, and those come from Wi-Fi, cell phones. And we still don't know the effects that that has on humans because there just hasn't been enough um, studies on it. But mm-hmm. but it's been tested to deflect those kind of things. So when people think like, oh, crystals, they're just like rocks or stones. Like, no, some of these some of these crystals really have proven results on, um, you know, scientifically proven results when you wear them, when you carry them on you. And for the longest, people thought that sage. Um, when you burn sage it, to to get away bad spirits, that was just like a myth or a old wise tale. And it's been proven now that sage does kill bacteria in the air. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I I want us to get back to some of the old ways and and not to just think like um, these things are like witchy or <laughs> or you know what I mean? Like there mm-hmm. there's actually some um, some they they actually have been validated. So. That's good to know. See, I'm glad you shared that with everyone because a lot of people don't understand like stones and 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 how they definitely like. I wear a bracelet. It's got a uh, it's hematite. I wear one every day. Right. Um, yeah. So you know, and it's something that you know my son does. So it's like when it comes to bracelets and everything, he makes those, and then the stones are amazing. You know. So right. I'm with you on that. See, people need see, see you dropping knowledge. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what we need yeah, right now. Yeah. Listen, I want to I want to let as many people as I can know. That is the goal. Like you can't. I have a po- a line in my poem that says, um, "We don't need to be a caterpillar morph ready for flight." We need to be phoenix on fire sharing our light because when you change and you keep it to yourself like the butterfly is kind of selfish. You know what I mean? You got to bring everybody with you. We got to bring our, we got, we have to bring our people with us. And if they don't know, it's, I feel like it's our duty to tell them if, if they're willing to accept it. It'll, it'll touch those who it's meant to touch. You know what I mean? Preach this. Preach. <laughs> so... <laughs> Family, check this out. So we have her as an accomplished model. She's an amazing author. She's a life enthusiast, strong businesswoman. So now the question of the day is, what's next for Chanel? Yeah, so I have so much in store, so much in store. I have my second book, which is a poetry and photography kind of like portfolio um, mixed Mm -hmm. with the poetry book. And Um, Because my first love creatively was photography. A lot of people don't know that, but I had a website and studio and everything. That was like five years ago. But I merged the two, and this book will be dropping late summer, probably July, and it's called The Side Still Waters, and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's um, the, the poems go in progression, just like the set I did at Goddess Blow Up, so You'll see the different kind of phases that I that one goes through, and it centers around um, heartbreak and healing from that, and and kind of going into um, what what because you know what we uh, we women like to a lot of times blame the guy. It's so easy to blame the guy, right? Like no, he of course, he, yeah. it was him. <laughs> it was it was him. <laughs> like you know, and you know sometimes they are at fault, but. For me, because I'm on this journey, I always want to be introspective. And I had to realize that a lot of times I was not a good partner at all. 
Um, and I have to own up to that. And I, and then I have to go further and say, well, why wasn't I? Why did I have those behaviors? Why was that? And, of course, like with anybody, it, it, it will always go back to your childhood and your upbringing and the things that you saw and the things that you didn't see and, and, and witness. I talked about this at the Goddess Full of maybe maybe I didn't know how to love a man because I never seen a woman love a man in a healthy way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, so the poems kind of talk about that, and it gets deep, and um, there's tear jerkers, and it, the way that it progresses, progresses, it's also a story. So I definitely urge everyone to sign up for my mailing list at ChanelAngelie.com so that they can be abreast of when that book drops because, because the – photographs are so intimate and vulnerable i'm only doing a limited edition of them because it's mm-hmm. a real it's, it's really an art piece to me so yep that's what's next for me and then of course i want to open up a metaphysical store here in atlanta so that's next on the list and then at, during around the new year holiday time i'm thinking about dropping a motivational journal um, for men and women to kind of work through kind of slash planner um, when the new year begins. So I have a lot of things I need to stay busy on. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. And we're not mad at you. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. It looks as though, like you said, the, your your evolution has really went toward this particular direction, which is to help others. So the one last question before we close out, well, kind of one last mm-hmm. question. <laughs> uh, with everything that you've learned and such, how have you imparted that wisdom and that, that for all intents and purposes, as a life enthusiast, how have you passed that along to your children? Oh, wow. That, that is such a good question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that before. Um, so, yeah, I take that extremely seriously because um, if I don't teach nobody else, I, if I if I don't know anything else about my purpose and what I was supposed to do here, I know that that is my purpose before anything else, before anybody else. So everything that I learn, and again, I can always reference my poems, which in a line it says, um, now that I have daughters with me, this curse stops because my pain will not be theirs. They deserve relationships that are sincere. So what I mean by that is that um, none none of the lessons that I had to learn, none of the things that I had to go through, none of the pain, heartache, um, struggles that I endured, um, I I, I I don't foresee that for them at all because that is my job as a mother to kind of clear that, clear that path for them. And then I don't know if you've ever read Siddhartha, which, is about a guy who's like a high priest and his son is just like totally like the opposite direction. So balance comes into key too. So I do also understand that no matter how much I pour into these little people that I call my own, they still have their own path to live too. So there's a, there's a, there's a a balance between detachment from your children, but also knowing you are obligated and have a responsibility to do as much as you can to um, veer them in the right direction. So, yeah, I definitely live by that. <laughs> Simply amazing. That's what I'm talking about. Wow, family, I'm telling you, uh, how can we how can we close this out? How, well, we got to tell everybody how to how to follow you, Chanel. How to follow Chanel and Jalee, learn more about what you got going on. When you go ahead and you drop that book that everybody's got to go ahead and get a hold of, but if you don't get yeah. a hold of that one, make sure you get milk. And then make sure to yeah. check her out whenever she opens up her place in Atlanta. How can they follow you? So definitely go to my website, ChanelAngelie.com. It's C-H-A-N-E-L-L-A-N-G-E-L-I.com. And subscribe to my newsletter because I do send out emails pretty frequently and keep people up to date. An easier way than that is you can follow my business Facebook page, which is Melanin Mermaid with an S at the end. Um, on Facebook and then of course Instagram, which is Chanel Angeli underscore. So yeah, I have I I I try to keep a lot of uh, avenues open for communication. <laughs> That's what's up. 
Well, family, y'all heard it here on Urban Times. Thank you, Chanel, for sharing with us all that you do. And we know that you're going to, uh, oh, man, it's just going to be amazing what's going to have happen for you in 2020. Um, Thank yeah, you for I can't wait. Me. I can't wait. Oh, no. Yeah, hey, the pleasure all on. So. It was a pleasure. Thank you.